All hail the ship train! <laughs> <laughs> and this is one ship apparently the cannon won't sink. The cannon can still sink it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 20, Hearts Breaker. Hearth, like hearth warming, like the fireplace hearth. Oh, hearth, hearth, oh, that was heart. Okay. Hearth, hearth, uh, tweet, hearts, heart. You know What's what? Well, let's just use my version. <laughs> this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 20, Hearthbreakers. This is one of those episodes where I did a lot of pausing because there was a whole lot of cringing. Eh, that's not my favorite style of comedy. <laughs> Though Maud and Marble Pie are brilliant. They are fun, and probably the best part of this whole episode was the two of them. And another two. Oh look, a cannon ship. Kind of. It's suggested anyways. <laughs> yes, because let's take the two who don't talk and pair them up on the same team and have them spend the time not really talking to each other. Like, yeah, that's gonna get shipped six ways to Sunday. <laughs> People are like, I'll take this ship. Yeah, because from what I've seen, people usually ship Big Mac with Fluttershy. And they're like, well, we can now ship Big Mac with this character because it's more canon and more likely to happen. And our ship won't sink. Yay! <laughs> the ship will still sink because they might be related. Oh, wait, that doesn't matter in the fan fiction world. That only matters in canon. Ah, but here's the thing. Even if they are related, they're more like 20th cousins. Yeah. They're far enough apart that genetically they'd be okay. Actually, from what I understand, even second cousins are genetically okay to mate with. Second cousins are legal to mate with, and I'm sorry, I look at my second cousins and I'm like, really? People do this? <laughs> uh, well, moving on from that topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was a difficult episode to watch because you knew where it was going right from the title. Yeah, I knew it myself. The moment I saw the episode title, it was like, ooh, this is going to be one of those episodes where I'm pausing a lot because, ooh. <laughs> yes, and then they made it very obvious what the issue was going to be when Pinky and AJ showed up at Twilight's and they all started comparing notes on traditions and I'm like, yeah, there is nothing more sacred than the family traditions. This is not going to go well. It will end fine because it's MLP, but it's not going to go well. Mm -mm. Though that reminds me of the beginning of the episode with Twilight and Spike and how Spike's like, can we wear our presents now? <laughs> and apparently how their tradition of opening all the presents early, my family tradition is one present on Heartswarming Eve and one present on Heartswarming, just to stay in canon universe. Mm -hmm. uh, cute little story and I also love the Oh, a book. What I've always wanted. <laughs> oh, it's like, why does he even get excited? Because he knows Twilight always gives him a book. Mm-hmm. And Twilight should have learned by now that Spike's not that much into reading actual books. Comic book, yes. You know, think of your brother when you're shopping for Spike. Yes. And, hello? It's a family thing? Why are you staying by yourself? air quotes because Spike's there, for her swarming Eve, why aren't you going to the Crystal Empire? You know, especially since Cadence is pregnant, or going to Canterlot to see your parents? Or to meet with Luna and Celestia. I know they're not as closely related, but Twilight probably does in some way see Celestia as kind of a second mother figure. Oh, she is definitely a mentor figure and there's a lot of closeness, but, and they, weren't they in Camelot, wasn't that where they went for the Hearthswarming Eve play that they put on? You know, for this thing that's all about family and friendship and togetherness. Oh yeah, Spike and I stayed at the castle. So, you probably have a list a mile long. Nitpicks? <laughs> um, okay, a little creepy that you all have dolls of yourselves that you put up on the hearth. You know, and then with Applejack talking about, oh, don't you have crochet dolls that you hand down? Well, if you're handing them down, then they no longer look like the person that's using the doll, so does that mean it doesn't matter what the doll looks like? 
Now, a small nitpick for myself that I just remembered is the fact that Mod was able to break a giant boulder into itsy bitsy pieces by punching it. Couldn't she have just rolled the... what was it called? All I know is it's a giant egg-shaped boulder up the hill by herself. Holder's boulder, and yes, she should have been able to, but she was in super mode, and she was probably only able to do all of that because Pinkie Pie was in trouble. Hmm. Ah, the family in danger gives you superpowers moment. Yes. And seriously, Big Mac, even without love poison, should have been able to move it by himself. Should not have taken all of them. Especially since there's a shot in the actual mod introduction episode where she tosses a boulder and gets a giant mushroom cloud out of it. Yeah, so that is a continuity break. Which mm -hmm. I wasn't even getting around to continuity breaks yet. <laughs> well, that one popped into my head. Please continue. <laughs> no, I was just... Sticking with nitpicking, and most families have several traditional dishes that go together, but really? The layered bean dip. Come on, Granny Smith. Really? Uh, that also made me another thing that my brain went, uh, what? <laughs> are, are these, like, rocks you can actually eat, or are they actually just rocks? <laughs> used for flavoring because it is possible to utilize rocks in cooking to some degree for flavoring slash seasoning but at least one person took a bite of the rock that reminds me of the way pinkie pie's parents spoke i can't duplicate it myself right now but yeah <laughs> yeah it's like i know we pretty much made her family amish stereotypical amish not actual Amish, but if the parents speak like that, then how come none of the children speak like that? I do find it funny how Granny Smith and Pinkie Pie's parents got along pretty well, especially the, we were betrothed by the stone, and she's like, we're gonna get that stone. Do you think they'll find a apple farmer for me? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> well, he was kind of blushing, so that indicates more of embarrassment, like, I can't believe she just asked that. <laughs> but based on the fact that Granny Smith had more knowledge about the family, they were obviously getting along the best out of anybody. So what did we like about this episode? Mm, Maud and Marble. Yep, definitely Maud and Marble, and Pinkie Pie was pretty okay, but I definitely enjoyed Maud and Marble better. Well, Pinkie Pie was more in character, which made an improvement over the last episode. Though, there was a nice pun with a cutie mark in this episode. Limestone's cutie mark. <laughs> it's a lime with stones on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, though I'm trying to figure out why she has such a sour personality, because I don't think I would consider lime sour. Not as sour as lemons, but lime fits in better with the rock theme, because limestone. That's... The thing is, Pinky's name doesn't, even her full name, Pinkamina, doesn't really fit with the whole rock theme. So, you know, it's still very obvious that this whole thing is retcon. And continuing my nitpicking about the heartwarming dolls that you interrupted. Okay, if they make their dolls out of rocks, why don't they just save them from year to year? And what do they do with the old dolls? Hmm. Well, it kind of makes sense to have dolls each year to year because they age, so they get bigger. So that could be a reason they have new dolls every year. Hmm. And what they would do with the old ones, I'm not quite sure. Maybe grind them up for something else, put them somewhere, especially if they're for the kids and they're showing them growing up. I don't know. Yeah, because it'd be kind of creepy to destroy them because then you're basically destroying like an effigy or... It's like making a voodoo doll and destroying it. <laughs> oh, I, I did like how we got the recap of why the ponies have heart swarming. Hmm. Just for the people who weren't watching a few seasons ago or and or don't remember. Mm -hmm. When I saw that part, I was like, oh, this is kind of redundant. Couldn't we have used this for something else? Of course, then I watched the rest of the episode and went, yeah, that's probably fine. <laughs> Yeah, this thing that was actually one of the highlights of the episode, along with the names of all the candies, tying back to the play. Mm -hmm. Especially at the end of the recap, where it's crunch. Hey, where'd part of the flag go? Pinkie Pie's like, I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we also got, I think, some new names because the person who sewed the flag as well. Yeah, because I don't think we had that before, Nimble Thimble. Mm -hmm. I just realized that that would be a funny name to have for an earth pony who did the sewing. <laughs> Because I, I don't really see Earth Ponies doing much hand sewing. <laughs> Unless they have a sp special device they put on their hoof that allows them to sew with dexterity. Um, let's not forget the Apple Family Reunion episode. They were working on that quilt together. Still trying to figure out how that works. Of course, I'm also still trying to figure out how they can grab things with their hooves, but... Uh... And I was also going to ask the question of how did Pinkie Pie get that present on the train? Because the train wasn't there when they were going to do this, but then I realized I'm asking a question about Pinkie Pie, so I stopped. Good call. Can you think of any other nitpicks? Entirely how angry Pinkie Pie's parents got, I mean, it was like out of Dexter's lab in the episode where he's at the farming community, and he like finally manages to put together a light bulb, and they're like, it's demonic, it's evil! Like, <laughs> wow, really? Oh, you mean when they first come out and see what AJ has done? Mm-hmm. Because they're very disapproving, and they go full name on Pinky. Like, that's serious. You know you're in trouble with your parents when they go full name on you. Oh no, there's the middle name. Oh no, there's the last name. I'm so dead. <laughs> yeah, mine usually didn't go beyond the middle name. It's no wonder I don't like my first or my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to come up with a joke with the syllables of the word ember, but there's only two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the episode, but I had a lot of cringing on it. So overall, it was an okay episode. The real savers for it for me were Mod Pie and Marble Pie. The main saving grace for me was that everyone kind of seemed to be in character. Because, okay, if it was cringeworthy and out of character... I just, I really don't enjoy that style of writing. So, personal preference. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan of the, what I like to call cringe comedy. Mm -hmm. where the comedy is supposed to be you cringing at the thing and laughing at that cringe factor. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 5, Episode 20, Hearth's Warming Eve. Damn it. <laughs> Ah, and this has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 20, Hearthbreakers. Did anyone else hear the Heartbreaker song when they saw that title? <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions, and also has a Patreon. All links in the description.